Hello and welcome to Be Powerful with Liz and Lee. It's a new day and we're so glad you're here. So you can expect to hear candid conversations on what it means to be powerful. Live authentically, live in the midst of ups and downs, productively, and above all else, joyfully. We are so thankful for you, our community of listeners, and we hope you enjoy today's show. All right. Hello, everybody. I'm here today with Liz, of course, and our special guest, Claire Samuels. Thank you for being here, Claire. Thanks so much for having me. Y'all are excited to have you. Anytime. It was easy. You just are a neighbor. So you just walked right down and we're just going to chat. Just right down the street (laughs) on this gorgeous day. I know. But you are a little more than a neighbor. Mm -hmm. You are a divorce attorney in Charlotte. I think a lot of our Friends and fellow Charlatans know of you because you are well respected and well awarded in our community for being one of the best lawyers in town. So, a divorce attorney, mediator of Claire Samuel's Law. You started your own business two years ago. And we want to talk to you specifically because what I really like about what you've done is the way you, you title what you do as a becoming divorce, that you want to empower people to go through divorce in a more healthy way. That's true. Yes. Um, A couple years ago, I really decided to make a shift in my practice, um, just seeing the trauma Mm -hmm. um, that people would go through that wasn't necessary when they were going through already a very difficult time. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's no magic pill that makes a divorce pain-free. I I wish I had that kind of magic, but there definitely are ways to do it with some dignity, with Mm -hmm. some respect. Um, it, to make it less painful for you, for your children, mm-hmm. for your families, for your community. And how long had you been practicing before you decided to make that jump? It was 13 or 14 wow. years. I've been I've been practicing in Charlotte for over 15 years now. Okay. Gosh, I didn't realize that. Fantastic. So divorce is, is tough for any of us. And um, both Lee and I, we're divorced from our ex-husband. I think everybody knows Everyone that. Everyone knows that. And, and, <laughs> and, and we're not here to pro, you know, propose divorce, but literally over 50% of marriages do end in divorce. Right. And while I can speak for the positive side of a divorce where it was an amiable one, um, it's one of the hardest things I've ever been through. And that is with the best side of that. So that said, I mean, what you're doing, I think is very empowering. And that's why we wanted you on the podcast to be, except sometimes that things are not, when they're not working out, you need some real, you need somebody on your team. Right. Right. And, and, and sometimes multiple people on your Mm -hmm, team, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm, there's, mm -hmm. there's the legal aspect for sure, but financial, emotional, Mm -hmm. spiritual, what are you doing to care for yourself so you can show up in life outside of your divorce, Mm -hmm. show up for your kids, um, show up in your community, show up at work and not let it take over your life. But even in the best circumstances, that's what it feels like. It it does take over your life. I mean, I mean, I am sure you, we have different stories. We all have a different story, right? That's right. But what we need to do as an empowering community is empower each other to be able to handle that. No one gets married to anyone and goes, I better plan on this divorce. Right. You know, that's right. That's right. That's right. we that's all right. plan right. to live happily ever after. And when it doesn't ha- happen that way, you need somebody, I think, like you or somebody that is not going to go, well, let's just take this guy or this woman down. But tell us a little bit more about how you do law differently from other mm. divorce lawyers. Sure. Well, I mean, I think you have to start from the place that there's much more going on than the legal issues at hand. The legal right. issues at hand, Generally speaking, are straightforward. You've got a couple of different buckets that you're mm-hmm. dealing with, you know, the assets, support issues, kit, like you've got those general buckets, mm-hmm. but right. the underlying emotions that are just inherent in any divorce, good or bad, a lot of um, practice practitioners go see a therapist about that or stuff it or whatever, but really working with Mm -hmm. somebody who can bring it to the forefront and recognize that it's there. And then how are we going to work to address your fears, to get you the education and the information that you need? Because 
a lot of times you you hope it's your only divorce, but most people haven't been through this. So right. the fear of the unknown is the first thing yep. that we've got to get in there and address and start getting you the right tools. So maybe you do need a therapist. Maybe you do need a coach. You know, they do different things. Mm-hmm. Maybe you need someone mm-hmm. to start helping you understand the finances. Maybe mm-hmm. that's not something you've taken part in and that's fine too, but we can we can work with all of that. Then we can get your emotions regulated. Right. So you're in a position to make these really important decisions you have to make. Yes. That is so, so powerful. Especially with children. Right. Um, so pretend I'm happily married. Everything's great. I cannot wait to be married. What is your suggestion? I mean, do we plan on that before? <laughs> you know, that's a good question. I mean, do I go, well, I really love Lee, and if we get married, do I need to make a plan just in case it doesn't work out? You know, <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be the divorce lawyer answer, right? Yeah. I sound like, yes. but it, it's an insurance policy yeah. in the tackiest sense, right? <laughs> yeah. Like you don't you like you don't hope your house is gonna burn no, down. True. But you need don't a not policy. buy good insurance, point. right? Um, That's such a good analogy. Same thing with a marriage, health insurance. Yeah. You know, but all but more than that, with the right professionals involved, it has you having the conversations that you're going to have to mm-hmm. have in your marriage. You know, what are yep. your goals? How are you going to, you know, spend money, save money? Mm -hmm. Who's going to be in charge of what? I mean, those aren't the sexiest conversations, right? No, No, most people just don't want to talk about it. Yeah, not when you're young and in love. Yeah, or even old and in love. Sure. I mean, you know. Right, right. Like this is, these are the things we have and these are the limitations or whatever, the boundaries we need to do with spending or whatever it is. It's it's hard conversations. Mm -hmm. Well, and I would wager that most people, especially younger, getting married are not really into looking up the legality in their state about what they're actually entering into. Right. I mean, of all the things that we sign our name to, I think we just kind of run into that without much knowledge. I mean, when it came to me, I was like, I don't know the North Carolina laws about this. Right. Click, click, click. Yeah. Sign our names. But I think that in terms of you you also have people getting married later in life Mm -hmm, who mm -hmm. either have been married before and maybe have children from a previous marriage that they want to protect, or people getting married later in life who have already started building careers. It's not to say, I mean, and it, and there's not a one size fits all approach for right. that either. It's just, you know, you can talk about, okay, maybe this is the way that we want to deal with things that we're coming into the marriage with, and mm-hmm. this is how we want to handle what we build together or all yeah. different shapes and sizes. Again, figuring out what is the best approach for you and your partner or you and your family. Do you ever find yourself in that situation helping people before they get married? A lot. a lot. I do a lot that's of a good idea. So okay. do. I do a lot of I do a lot of prenups. So wouldn't you say that's okay. a okay. piece of good advice if you're considering getting married to please consider a prenup? To consider it. And Absolutely. E- I mean, what if you're not really, you know, you don't have a lot of assets yet? What if you're just young and just going to start out? Is that necessary then? I mean, Maybe not, mm-hmm. um, you know, but at a minimum, I would say you should be having those conversations, right. some kind mm-hmm. of conversation about that. And what's our spirituality plan. and yes, the money, the spirituality, the, things, the whole thing. The thing. Yeah. You yes. just did a post. So what are the three things? Oh, gosh. That, well, it was like <laughs> yes, um, emotional clarity, financial clarity, and conflict resolution, I think, were exactly. the three benefits yeah. of Yeah. I mean, a you're, you're definitely laying out a plan for this is... Or, you know, it with that emotional piece of it, what does money stir up for you? What did it mean right, in right, your right. family when you right. were growing up? Did Was there somebody who was in charge and what did that mean? Mm-hmm. You know, was there someone who was the moneymaker and someone who was the homemaker, you know, for right. a lot of us? Or that stirs up stuff for right. people, you know, right. how they feel about money. But, I mean, money and sex are the number two – or the top, top two reasons two. people get divorced. And right. so – Having those conversations on the front end, I think, is helpful, whether you end up getting a prenuptial or not. Mm-hmm. But what does it hurt to go have a conversation right. with a lawyer about it to see, 
um, if it's something you want to consider. Right. Well, and I think too, you can use that as a tactic to like smoke out your partner. Smoke out. <laughs> Boy, just be like, wait a second. That was it. That's a paranoid statement. Uh, let me see. I won't, there really I won't, I won't put my stamp on that as a peaceful <laughs> warrior. That's exactly right. That's the opposite of what we're talking about. So I think, I think we're talking about our goal is for everybody to have a happy life, a joyful life, mm-hmm. a great marriage. Yes. Right? Absolutely. And so this is setting the stage for honesty and conversation. Yeah. Right. It's knowledge. Right. Knowledge right. is yeah. power. Well, and when that doesn't turn out to be the reality, mm-hmm. okay, well, you but you went mm-hmm. into this relationship feeling mm-hmm. joy mm-hmm. and it was a sacred relationship and mm-hmm. your most important relationship at that time. Yes. So how do you exit it even having some semblance of the way that you went right. into it? Right. Right. And yeah. not being Pollyanna about it either. Sure. I mean, right. everything is not stars and rainbows when you decide to go hire a collaborative attorney. <laughs> yeah. Or it, I mean, it, I don't it doesn't see stars mean, and rainbows yeah, there. Yeah. It yeah. doesn't mean absence of conflict, yes. absence of hurt feelings. I mean, lack of, you know, distrust. Right. All those things are still present. You're just working with a team of professionals who can help you manage those emotions, again, to get clear. Mm-hmm. Right. So you can start mapping out what your future is going to look like instead of dwelling on the past. Not that mm-hmm. it's not important, not that it doesn't matter. It certainly mm-hmm. does. But if you can only look mm-hmm. in the front while you're driving your car or use your rear view mirror, right? You've right. got to pick one. Right. And right. You'd, you'd have to be able to look forward. And so that's really where I try to guide people mm-hmm. and kind of like, what what do you want your next chapter to look like? Have you ever resolved a marriage? Have, oh, has anything like that ever, like you get these people in a mediation and they go, I still kind of love you or any of that? Well, I don't know. You do, you do have people who get back together. It happens. Okay. It absolutely happens. We might yeah. have a mediation, get everything resolved. I um, actually yeah. was in a mediation um a couple of weeks ago, and I went into the room with the wife and her um, lawyer, and they said, um, "We're going to have drinks after this." No, I, <laughs> I love that. And you know, I it was love just, that. I mean, it, you- it can happen. Yeah. I mean, that's not everybody's story, and again, no. that's not like the false bill of goods you're trying to sell somebody. Yeah, but it absolutely can be your reality yeah. if two people want it to be. I mean, sometimes just that conversation and that facing the reality that wow, we have gotten to the point where we just don't want to live together, mm-hmm. and then you kind of see each other in a different light. I remember my ex husband and I went to so many therapists, and some of our favorite moments, and I've talked to you about this. Yeah. We're walking out of the therapist's office, bursting out laughing, and going out and having a drink and going, right. that guy's nuts. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. But, but, I mean, like, because it brought us into the same space. I mean, and that's I know that's not what you do. It was just sort of an interesting question because I think it's it's the whole point. I mean, you're, you're trying to bring people together right. to then be consciously separating. That's right. But it, but, but it can happen. Yeah. And, I mean, I love the part of your story I think that you told recently where you were talking to your ex-husband and even though you were in this like bawling, crying mess puddle on the floor, he was like, oh, I want that too. Yeah. You know? And what a... Yes. To to be able to even in that moment, it kind of gives me goose like to yes. like to be able to relate see each other yes. and to recognize like what we have going on here isn't really working for either one of us. Mm-hmm. But so, the love and respect is at another level, right? Right. So you don't have I mean, the love and respect can stay there. Sometimes it doesn't at all. But right. in my case, I got lucky with that one or somehow you know, fortunate. And that's when you know you have reached a high level. Yeah. When you're having that high level conversation where you can be really a mess and somebody that you really don't want to be in the same, you know, marriage with any longer can meet you there and accept that and support you in some way. That's a joyful moment. Yes. And that's what we, and sometimes I think that's the joy. And I was just, it's funny you brought that up because I was talking to my ex-husband yesterday, and we are both happily divorced. Mm -hmm. There's some, I mean, 
I know that people will disagree with this and people are like, stay married no matter what the hell is going on in your life. Mm. But you can really become, you can find each other in a different spot. Mm -hmm. And I rely on him for uh, in advice. He relies right. on me for advice. Right. We're not best buddies. Right. But we, it, we're we humans. Right. That we're married. Right. So we're not just going to go, and then we're done. You well, know. right. And you... You live in the same town. Yes. The same we have community. children and grandchildren. Have children and, children. And, grandchildren. Yeah. And, and all of that is so important. Mm -hmm. And it was amazing. You know, it's great to see when that happens. But mm -hmm. also what I really want people to know is, okay, you might be married to an a-hole dirt bag right. who is not going to meet you at yes. that place. Yeah, right. Y'all are not going to be buddies. Is, you're not is, having drinks. That's right. That's yes. right. You're not going to be buddies. You're not having drinks. You're not going mm -hmm. to have that kind of partner mm -hmm. in the exit. But how do you still yep. maintain your integrity, mm -hmm. maintain your peace, maintain your joy so you can move forward mm -hmm. with your life? Because mm -hmm. that's right. the piece that you can control. We all know how important it is to fuel yourself just right every morning. Liz, what's your jet fuel? It's the HSM smoothie, of course. Obviously. But also, I've got a new little thing You've called... got a new friend? From Sakara Life, the Metabolism Super Powder is your go-to. It fires up your metabolism, curbs sugar cravings, helps ease bloat, and is it delicious? Oh, it's so good, especially in your coffee. It's got ah, a great taste. Dump it in the coffee, it. blend it dump up. Dump it and in go. the coffee, blend it, and be excited because you're going to love it. <laughs> Y'all go to sakaralife.com. When you check out, you'll receive 20% off your order, which is a great deal by using the code XO Liz HSM. That's X O L I Z H S M for 20% off your order at sakaralife.com. What I admire about you is you've created a community mm -hmm. of women that's businesses, of, yes, yes, of entrepreneurs. Yes, yes. Clear's curated Thank you. community. Yes, that's, that's right. right. And we're part of it. Yes. We're very excited I'm so about thankful. That. Yes. 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 And you don't have to be divorced to be in it. Yeah, that's right. That's right. You don't <laughs> you have to be divorced happily in it. married. That's right. right. That's right. We have some happily married yes. members. That's correct. Right. Yes. And But the point is finding people who offer the type of support and services for your clients so that you can recommend people to play is for just what you're saying and empowering that's, you them. Know, and I, well, I always loved, even it, it, always in my practice, connecting mm -hmm. right. women with other wonderful women. And I yes. would be like, oh, you should call so-and-so, or you should yes. call so-and-so, mm -hmm. you, mm -hmm. you, should, you should meet up with her. You, you're yeah. worried about organizing your financial documents, whatever. And when I opened my own practice, I was like, I want to pull all these women together, yes. not just to support yep. my clients, but to support each, each other. other. And it is that because- when my clients sign up, they get your book and they get a pass oh, to wow. come to class. Oh. And it's so nice. They get this care package of yes. all this. Right. And you feel the yes. love kind of around you and the support that's there. <laughs> and you can go, so, not go. Like maybe it's for you. Maybe yeah, this one service sure. is for you. Maybe it's not. But knowing that it's there. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, maybe that's your new thing. You're going to try a new class. Right. Like you, yeah. Maybe you haven't done a Pilates bar class right. before. And so you're going to do that. Or you do want to go see a stylist because you want a new look. Yeah. Or maybe, you know, it's so it's taking it also beyond the traditional support systems that we mm -hmm. know yep. women need when mm -hmm. they're going through divorce and really trying to think about, oh, all the things. Like who yes. helps you get your house organized and, if you're and, thinking about moving. And, and for know. the future. Mm -hmm. Like when this is all said and done, mm -hmm. they'll have a new, maybe possibly group of people. Mm -hmm. Yes, because it's and a lonely process. That's what she was talking about before mm -hmm. we started the podcast. Was what, It doesn't matter who you are, you feel so isolated right. when you're going through it. Mm -hmm. Even if you've got a best friend, even because you right. and I had each other. Yeah. And we, I mean, even if you've got somebody it's an isolating event and you're all, you just feel like who I'm now this different human and I need somebody. Right. And a lot yeah. of the professional advice and used to be part of my advice right. is like, mm -hmm. shut it down. Mm -hmm. Don't talk, don't talk to, to anybody. anybody. Yeah. Don't yeah, even yeah. talk to your therapist because there's certain situations mm -hmm. where your therapy records could get brought into a litigation session. Wow. And so if you... I didn't know mm. that. Are told that you need to shut it all down. Mm -hmm. Then what? I mean, you certainly 
I still believe that you don't want to do divorce by community. You don't want to be, you want yeah. <laughs> a good trusted friend, some good mm-hmm. trusted right. professionals in your life. You don't want to be asking everybody that's in every women's group that you're a part of or what have you, how they did yeah. their divorce, <laughs> what they should do. You know, yeah. th- that's the that's the inclination. But shutting it down where people have nobody. <laughs> exactly. And they do feel isolated. Mm-hmm. Again, you're just exacerbating the fear mm-hmm. that right. drives bad decision making. Right. Right. And I think that point is very important that the fear, that the anxiety, that the stress that comes into that really weighs heavily on decision making. And so then being able to find a way to work through that to be clear in your decisions is really important. Yeah. And, you know, we can talk about it all day long when you're in it. And that's why I think the people that you have are right. Because like when you're in it, you know, just the other day, y'all know I had thyroid cancer years ago. Yeah. And I went for my follow-up at um, Sloan Kettering the other day and got all my test backs. I'm fine. Yay. But thank you. Yeah. Yeah. But Saturday morning, you know, everybody's so advanced now. You get the you yeah. get the Either results before you can talk to your doctor. Oh, geez. And so I'm doctor Googling, like, what does this mean? And, oh, you know, go, there's good resources out that. there, right? I know, right? there, But, you know, I'm looking at John Hopkins and so I'm yeah, yeah. Make, And I'm like, okay, this level. And, I mean, mm. I called both of my parents, my husband, like, in an absolute spiral. Like, oh. it's back. <sighs> like, because you can't. Like when you're in fear, I'm like, mm-hmm. you know, they they took the they took the ultrasound. They went under my neck this time. They didn't do that last time. They went under. Oh, my neck. Gosh. You know, you just go yeah. down the yeah. rabbit yeah. hole of total all the worst case scenarios. So that's normal. That's yes. what's gonna happen. But who's gonna help you like make sense of it? Make mm-hmm. sense of it mm-hmm. exactly, mm-hmm. exactly. And, and that's you. Yeah. I love. Is there anybody? I mean, I'm, so, yeah. I just, I, I just love that you're doing this. So, is there another? Are there other attorneys? Are you the sole one doing it this way? I mean, there's actually um, a collaborative um, law practice group here good. in Charlotte. That's um, yes, there are others in our community who are doing it, but it's not widely mm-hmm. known or accepted or kind of thought of as like woo woo, like yeah. family yeah, yeah, law. Yeah, Although yeah. it's not yeah. like it, it started in. Minnesota and then is wildly popular in California and other places. So it's not people here don't know about it as much as we would like, which, you know, we're right. definitely working on because people go see divorce lawyers and they don't know that this is an option. They don't right. know that there are alternatives out there other than the knockdown. You know, they think, mm-hmm. okay, I've either got to figure mm-hmm. this out at my kitchen table with my spouse or I've got to mm-hmm. go have you know, the marriage story, the, knock down, drag out. The and meanest, you don't. Yeah. Right. Well, can you talk to that a little bit? Because I'm thinking about it now as you represent me, let's say, and then Liz hires an attorney who is just like going for yeah. it all. Right. And so mm-hmm. then how do you keep the peace on that of that you're really working in one direction and they're not? I mean, I don't know if that's an easy answer, but I'm just kind of thinking out loud about how difficult that can be. I mean, there's definitely, there are a handful of attorneys and people, I imagine this is true in any Mm -hmm. legal community, Mm -hmm. you know who they are. Right. They are pot stirrers and, or, or, you know, they're, they've told their client this, that, and the other, but their client is so angry. Right. You know, it's the, it's the principle of the matter, whatever. And so they might drive in a different direction how it typically works is one spouse Mm -hmm. has come to see me. Sure. Okay. Well, how are we going to reach out to the, to your spouse? Are you going to talk to them? Am I going to send them a letter? Am I going to send them an email where we talk about, we really want to proceed amicably. There's going to, there's going to be financial documents that need to be exchanged. And it really is getting from a point A to point B. I mean, this can all be done cooperatively Mm -hmm. and with financial transparency or lawsuits can get filed. Like the documents are going to, they're going to get exchanged. And right. so which way do you want to do, do it? it? How much okay. money do you want to spend? spend? Right, mm-hmm. right. Well, and I, I also think that's commendable about you wanting to do something positive for your clients that doesn't necessarily mean more money for you at the end of the day. I mean, that, for sure. You know what I mean? That's like, right. You're, you're taking an approach that some people would just be like, it doesn't matter. I'm going for the gold and getting all right. the money. Right. We can, I can as right. an attorney. I mean, there's no question that as a litigation attorney, and I right. know it because I've done it for <laughs> yeah. years, yes. and I know I know how much I make on those cases right. versus the ones that – but you can also handle 
Mm-hmm. multiple cases. Mm-hmm. And that's the goal, though, is to get people on the other side of the right. divorce, yep. healthy, happy, whole. That's going to be a good experience for them. Yes. They're going to share that experience with their friend. Yep. And then there I get go. to help other people in the same way. Exactly. You know yes. I mean? like, right. To have a con- it's bet. just knowing that I am working really hard to be mm-hmm. a peacemaker. And mm. most of the time, even if you have an attorney like that. I always also say as a mediator, though, good attorneys know how to do battle in a courtroom. They right. do. And, right. that, and that's that's important. It's important. It's an important piece of my background. Absolutely. And and other attorneys in town. But really good lawyers know how to help you settle your case. That's great. Can I flip it to um, <laughs> the business side? And when you're dealing with something so intense mm-hmm. and so many emotions, how do you personally handle your well-being as right. far as also be saying being able to put your head on the pillow. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's a lot of strong energy yeah. that you have to deal with because, I mean, we get that in a different way. I think right. people come to us with stresses, but kind of like at the end of the right. moments we have together, everybody feels better. Right. Mm-hmm. And so it's that release of tension. But you've yeah. got people fl- <laughs> flailing things in the air to you, I'm sure, well, if you're in a mediation and it's not going so positively. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's definitely, I mean, I've done tons of trainings Mm -hmm. on different techniques, dealing with different personalities and all of that, but also compartmentalizing. It's not that Mm -hmm. I don't shut down feelings because I'm very empathetic to Mm -hmm. what people are going through. And And you do take a lot of that on. And as an attorney, you feel tremendously responsible for right. what's going on in people's lives and mm-hmm. their kids and how all yeah. of this is impacting them. So it is, but, you know, to speak to the piece of how I take care of myself, I ha- I, I also have to practice and practice what yeah. I preach, you yeah. know, that I try to take that quiet time in the morning. It doesn't always happen, but when I do, right. my day goes so much better. <laughs> or you like to work out Exercise. with us. Exercise. That's <laughs> yeah. right. That's right. I wasn't I'm at the trying to, yeah, to admit was, that. Yeah. No, but it's true. It's <laughs> it is that true. My 545 workout, sure. is, that time is really important to me. Mm-hmm. Um, it just gets – so my morning routine is a huge part of how I take care of myself. Right. And right. Um, again, the same things that I encourage um, my clients to do is really just like, what are the outlets for you Mm -hmm. where you can find joy? If it's gardening, exercising, you know. Setting your day up for success. Yes. So if I am going to get a divorce and I come to you Mm -hmm. and I say, my ex- partner is just furious with me. Mm-hmm. How am I, I how am I going to be able to resolve this? What are the what are two or three things that I can do before we start spending the money with an attorney? Mm-hmm. Great question. One thing is if you have access to it to start to try and get your financial affairs in order, mm-hmm. at least document it. Right. Like, do you have access to bank accounts? Right. Do you have access to tax returns and things like that mm-hmm. to start pulling? Don't panic if you don't. Right. You know, some okay. people like that's like a first stage of panic. They're like, I don't have access to the accounts. I don't pay the bills. I don't know. You know, right. We can figure all that out. But that's sometimes like a first like legal step. Mm-hmm. Um, but meeting with an attorney to understand some of the nuances of mm-hmm. what's going on right. in your case, what a plan might look like. And that's what we do in an initial consultation. I get a very high level, bird's eye view of what's going on in your life, how you ended up at a Mm -hmm. conference room table across from me. Right. Mm -hmm. And then we come up with a plan in terms of, you know, here are the processes that are available. This is how we can start putting things in place. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, And sometimes that happens months or years before people ever even get separated. You know, yeah, sometimes right. people are just coming because they want to understand what their options are. But that's or a how good the point. Law works yeah. Or, you know, they're really, you know, they're in therapy. They're really trying to save yeah. their marriage. But instead just of in hearing case. from their friend or Google, it'll right. tell <laughs> you you have cancer. Um, <laughs> Sorry, I'm doing my call. <laughs> when you don't, um, really trying to understand from a lawyer in your state, because yep. I know y'all have listeners everywhere, but understanding from a lawyer in your state how things might play out for mm-hmm. you and what issues would be in play um, can start to, again, do things that ratchet mm-hmm. back that mm-hmm. fear yeah. of right. yep. what the heck is going to happen. Or right. I heard... You know, Susie Q, who, you know, 
got kicked out of her house and mm-hmm. was homeless and shuffling the street. Like, yeah. Again, instead of, you know, going down the rabbit hole of all the, you know, horrible things that could be like yeah. going and having that conversation. Yeah. Right, so right, right. Really and helpful. that's what struck me too is that point that you got to about knowing <laughs> anything about your finances and your bank accounts and your taxes. And I found myself in that unknowing situation. And I think that goes back to the prenuptial types of conversation at the beginning of your mm-hmm. marriage. Why in a partnership? And I'm just looking straight at myself, pot calling yeah, no. black. Would I not know that? Know that information. Right. Yeah. Right. Why do we put ourselves in those rules? Right. In those roles that you get yourself in that situation because I think that could head off a lot of the problems Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. later. And, you know, I think the part of just getting to know some of the, the rules and the, the laws and what's going to happen in case is important. I mean, we used a mediator and not a lawyer. I I did see one. Unfortunately, I couldn't see you, but that's a different story. (laughs) Yeah. Um, and, I think that's just empowering, again, Mm -hmm. to just go and start to put, you know, your thoughts in Mm -hmm. order. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, I mean, why I was also so quick to say, listen, if you don't have access to the finances or that hasn't been your role, give yourself some grace. Do not panic. Those are all Mm -hmm. things that we can figure out. They're just some of the things that I tell people in terms of getting a head start of documents that it's good to go ahead and pull together if you have access to them. If not. It's okay. We can figure that we'll out. We'll get it done. That's all, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. that's all, you know, and just giving yourself grace for what you did or didn't think of. Because again, right. nobody goes into this in the mindset of planning mm-hmm. for a divorce. And <laughs> right. even, you know, the cobbler with no shoes, like I have access to all of our accounts and I, well, Michael Hamm's was all Right, right, you know, like, right. And I like blindly let him do it. Now sure. he could be doing, yeah. I don't know. He's I got deals he's not, in Vegas. I know he's, he's not. Right, exactly. Right. Exactly. But so like, he's playing but, golf. Uh-huh. Right, exactly. Yeah. He's playing golf. <laughs> supposedly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, supposedly. Right. But, you know, I, I would be in the same. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's kind of like, and I'm the divorce lawyer. Exactly. I, I'm very easy right. to sign stuff right. he puts in front right. of me. So giving yourself. Exactly space and grace. But your trust is part of marriage. Right. Right. I'm coming from probably a a wounded point of view on some of this. Well, so are we all. I mean, exactly. When I was young, I was not, uh, it took me a minute. Even though I had a a parent that said to me, you make sure you know everything that's going on with your finances, no matter what, always have your own account, always do these things. And, and I realized I was one of the few people, at least in my age group that got that advice. But even so I was like, Oh, yeah. I don't really care. You it's, just keep doing what you do. It's and I just keep being, you know. It's also not fun. It's not yeah. fun. <laughs> Paying bills is the worst thing ever. I mean, one of the things like you yes. have to add, like do when you're going through this process oh. is ask people to put together a budget. And I mean, oh. you would think oh, it's yeah. the worst. Yeah, no. it, that is not I even hate to stuff. do that now. Right. right. No, right. I, my budget is, it looks good to me. I'm going to get that. No, I know. <laughs> no. It is. Hey, yeah. Green up. Yeah, I know. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Oh, I know. And I mean, you you know, what the point of this really discussion is, the root of your mission, mm-hmm. your ethos of that becoming, that empowerment, that mm-hmm. knowledge, that support system, that putting yourself in a healthy place to proceed. Yes. And it doesn't have to be about divorce. This is a, a way of life for everybody. Right. Um, and that's what we try to do, you do at the studio. Mm-hmm. And I think for people who, you know, aren't even, you know, thinking or would never about a divorce, right. there's somebody in your life maybe who is. And to kind of have right. some knowledge about this topic so that you can support them. Mm-hmm. Um, right. And that just to know wonderful people in our community, you were just named, what was it, the legal elite mm-hmm. by your peers, mm-hmm. the 2023 Business North Carolina I think that's lawyers, huge. which is by incredible. By your peers is yeah. really... That's a big deal. Well, thank you. And I think it's important that people yeah. know that, know that they mm-hmm. can access you and go through something horrible in a healthy way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that it's an empowerment. That's what we talk about. All the time. Owning your space, whatever you're doing, even if you have no knowledge of what's going right. on, right. but reaching out to somebody that's also going to empower you to do that. And yeah. that's you. I don't know if I've ever shared this with y'all. Oh, I mean, oh yay. Let's do it on the podcast. I mean, and it's going to sound it's going to sound like because I'm on the but, but no, I mean, I've been training with y'all for years and years and years. And so when I was opening 
my practice, I had read Becoming by Michelle Obama. Which right. You yes. loved. Such yes. a good book. So I know good. you're all the time reading yep. and you too. But, um, <laughs> and you but too. Definitely too. You, but yep. you too. So and, sure. And, um, but, you know, the be powerful mm-hmm. in the studio, you know, in thinking about how that applies in my practice, in my mm-hmm. world, I mean, I say, all, like, you can't be empowered, even in yes. divorce. It says that on my website. So that. Yes. Yeah, yes. You know? I love that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I love that. That's well, what, We're all here to empower each other. And I love the fact that you said this twice, you need to be able to put your head on the pillow at night. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, you could get just as tough as you need to get, mm-hmm. but you would really like, you know, at the end of the day, finances are going to come out. We can fight it as long as we want. You know, if it's over, it's over. Being peaceful doesn't mean you're going to be a pushover. No, Don't get no. that twisted. And no. I think that my clients <laughs> will attest to that. And yeah. anybody who works with me will attest to that. That doesn't mean we're yeah. rolling over and going to be a I wouldn't want to go up and pray. Like, that's no, no. not going to be a thing. <laughs> but but there is dignity, grace, and peace. And right. that, can, that can be a choice that you make for yourself, regardless of what your spouse is right. doing, regardless of how they're showing up in the process. That you can't control. Right. That's a, that's a good point. And that's probably a good point to leave with people, too. Absolutely. The yeah. dignity and... The grace it takes to don't let them steal your integrity. Right. Take them out I mean, of your there's, room. there's, they can't take you. That's right. They can't take. They can't you take out you. Of your integrity. That's right. Right. And no matter what goes down, when you've got children, you've got to have that peace. Even if you don't have children, right? It's you, really you've got to continue your own piece of who you are. Continue your own. Yes. Right. And that and and for but for people with children, that's what mm-hmm. I, like that's the legacy that yes. you're leaving with them. Right. Like, how do you show mm-hmm. up in life mm-hmm. yeah. when times are tough? What right. do you do in the face of adversity? Right. And those are the lessons that your kids need to see. And they will mm-hmm. remember and carry that with them. You know, you hear about adult children of divorce all yes. the time. They will remember how that went down and they will, you know, people are always so worried. Well, what if, you know, they do this and don't I need to do this? And okay. Your kids might not know it right now. Right. Uh Your kids figure it out. Your adult kids, as they grow up, they don't even necessarily have to get to be adults. Mm -hmm. They remember how their parents showed up and divorced and there's tons of research on it. So what do you want them to remember? What about do you, you want to model up for them? Yeah. I just I've always said modeling the behavior you want your children to do is everything and the words you speak are very very little. Mm-hmm. The modeling of the behavior is what they will remember. Mm-hmm. How did she or he mm-hmm. stand in the midst of all that fire? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. and that's the lessons mm-hmm. that carry on. Carry on and, and bring us to I mean that keep us empowered and keep us keep our families together. People are so afraid. Oh, how can you do this to your children, to your family? How could you tear it apart? The the marriage is if it's a bad marriage, it's going to tear a family apart. That's right. If it's a good marriage, it's not. Right. right. And it's just as simple as that. You're you're. It's not the doing of the deed. I don't think. Right. No. And it's, and and just because you're going through a divorce, you're. You're fractured. You're not broken. Right. And <laughs> yeah. we can take that. Right. Redesign it. Restructure it. We know that yeah. families look all kinds of different right. ways now right. and mm-hmm. mean all kinds of different things to different people. Mm-hmm. You know, um, my family doesn't have children in it, but we have fur babies and we right. have extended families mm-hmm. and nieces yep. and nephews that aren't biological and you know, mm-hmm. s- some families have two moms and two dads and, uh, you know, step parents and all of those different kind of things. So you can structure something that works for your people. Right. Yeah. Right. And that's, that's, well, that's, the whole part. Enc- that's encouraging. Yeah. And I love that. <laughs> Thank you. That's really, been yeah, that's good. So I mean, great. just a- again, the bottom line, find your joy, own it, be it. If it, if the marriage is not working, it doesn't mean you're a failure. It doesn't right. mean there's something wrong with you. Right. It doesn't 100%. mean there's something wrong with your spouse. 100%. Right, right, right. That's it just right. means it's not working. Right. And do you want to model the behavior of unhappiness and, and resentment? Or do you want to model the behavior behavior of, of bravery, courage, and love? Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. So I, I think that's what you do. And that's... 
I'm, I'm just so thrilled that you've been able to explain some of that to us and to our I know. podcast friends. You just make me feel good anytime you're around. Yeah, me so too. Thank you. I know Aww. you're just important to a lot of people, helping a lot of people through hard times. Mm -hmm. And so thank you for sharing all your gems and yes. words of advice. Yes. Anytime, anytime. I love it. This is great. And I and I love working with y'all. And this is thank so much thank fun. You. Thanks for having me. We'll see it's you like a fun this, chat. We, I know. Yeah, we'll see you at the next created uh party community yeah. party at your yeah. house yeah. Well, two doors yeah. down just, great like, party just come over <laughs> yeah. exactly it's always a fun time yeah. it is yeah. Yeah. alright thank, thank you Claire find Thanks everything so that you need to find if you would like to talk to Claire uh, in our show notes clairesamuelslaw.com you're the best Thanks, thank you thank you, you. So bye much. bye bye Thanks for listening to us today, wherever you get your podcasts. And remember, you can now find our podcast on YouTube. Yeah. If you liked it, please share, rate, and review. We love five stars. And we hope you'll work out with us online or in studio at hilliardstudiomethod.com. Hilliard.